Hey yo, what is up? Welcome to Ninja Geek Games, where in this episode, we're going to check out the game Curators by World Shapers that has recently launched on Kickstarter this week. Um, it's a tile laying game for one to four players where you take control of a curator um, where you need to expand your museum, uh, fill your exhibitions with artifacts and priceless objects that in turn brings visitors, meaning you have more money to spend. On top of that, there is also a puzzle element to the game, uh, but ultimately players are looking to gain victory points to win the game. So let's have a look at the contents. So the game comes with rules for both multiplayer and solo play. There's an excavating site tray where all object tokens are stored, and these are your priceless artifacts, um, and an auction house board where your collected artifacts are placed before storage into your museum. Each of the player boards represents the museum entrance and has areas for your money tokens, collected artifacts in storage, an area to place your visitor tokens, and some doorways that will lead to the expanded part of your museum. The employee chips are your workers that you'll flip to take actions during the game, and there are five different employee types per player. The wings are the tiles you'll use to expand your museum, of which there are three colours matching the colour of the objects. The contract cards are there to encourage you to design your expanded museum in a particular way to gain even more victory points, and they come as standard or complex types. So the aim of curators is pretty simple, gain the most victory points at the end of the game. And the game ends two rounds after the last wing tile has been claimed by any player. So how do you claim these victory points? Well, as the curator, it's your job to allocate an employee to a specific action. And to do this, select one of your employee tokens and flip it over. Now, once this action has been completed, it's the next player's turn and so on. And each of the curators in the game has access to five different employee tokens to hand. Um, and these are double sided with a different employee icon on either side. Now I'll explain why that's important in a bit. Now, for the employee tokens, the carpenter is able to add wing tiles to your museum board or to wings that have already been placed previously. All they need to do is select one of the available wing tiles and pay for it. Um, however, there is a very clever mechanic for claiming these um, tiles. So let's have a look. During the setup of the game, the game end disc is placed in the centre of the table. Um, you then select a number of wing tiles, and this is dependent on the number of players in the game. Randomise these tiles and place them in increasing spirals around the game end disc. When purchasing a wing tile, furthest tile from the game end disc is free. However, the cost of all these tiles increase by 1000 for each tile you skip. Therefore, this tile is free. This one costs $1,000, but this one actually costs $4,000. And you can take any tile you wish, you just have to pay that cost. Once you've claimed your tile, you can place it in any orientation, but it must be placed door to door with your museum entrance board or with any previously placed wing tile. Now, this is just an example of um, wings being placed over a series of rounds to your already expanded museum. Now, as for the archaeologist, um, its token is represented by a well-known icon um, from a particular character. That's right, Brandon Fraser from The Mummy. Not that one. No. Uh, Nicholas Cage from National Treasure. Not that one either. Who? Indy. Um, by, by a Mr. Jones. What? What? He's got a PhD. By a Dr. Jones. Anyway, flipping this token means you can take one object of any of the three colours from the excavation site tray and place it in your storage area on your museum entrance board. Also, you can claim another object token from that same excavation site tray of the same colour and place it in the auction house board. However, you can never have more than six object tokens in your museum entrance area at any one time. As for the collector, um, this employee is able to uh, buy objects from the auction house and place them in your museum uh, entrance area. Now, when they claim these um, object tokens from the auction house, they have to do so from the same colour, but they can buy any number from that particular area. And each of the positions in that column has a differing cost. In this example, two red objects are bought and placed in the storage area. The restorer is able to um, take objects from your storage area 
um, of one particular colour and place them in empty exhibits also matching that same colour. Now, if any of the exhibits within the wings are filled with corresponding objects of the same colour um, during this action, you get to gain one visitor token and place it on your museum entrance board. Um, so, for example, if these four exhibits within this wing contain objects of the associated colour, then that player could claim a visitor token. And lastly, we come to the financial manager. And here, uh, you simply gain money equal to the number of visitor tokens on your entrance board multiplied by a thousand. You've got two visitor tokens, you gain two grand. That seems simple, right? Not quite. There is a novel approach here, um, and that is that some employee tokens, uh, also all employee tokens, are double-sided uh, so that uh, once flipped, they'll show a different employee token on the other side. And that means at some point during the game, you'll end up with two employee tokens showing the same icon. And here you can take what's known as a double allocate action, where you flip both tokens, perform the associated action twice. Uh, therefore, the carpenter takes two wing tiles. The collector can purchase objects of two colours from the auction house. The restorer places objects of two colours in the exhibits. The archaeologist in Jenna Jones PhD can take object tokens of two colours from the excavation site tray and the financial manager gets two grand per visitor. Cha -ching. Now lastly we'll talk about the contract cards and each player starts with two of these and they show a particular configuration of coloured exhibits. Um, at any time during your turn you can match this pattern in any orientation with your placed wings if they contain objects. Um, that player then gains victory points indicated on that particular contract card. And there are two types of contract cards in the game, standard and complex, and you can gain additional ones during the game. And this is when a visitor token is placed on the track and it shows an icon of the uh, contract. Uh, so how does the game end? Um, now, when the last wing is taken by any player, that player gains one of the three different coloured object tokens that were placed on the game end disc at the, at the setup. Um, two more rounds are then played out, and this is so um, curators can tie up any loose ends before victory points are scored. Now, as for the victory points, each of the curators gains one victory point for every four grand that they own. Completed contract cards will show victory points on them. Each wing will show a victory point total that can be claimed if completed with objectives um, or objects. Um, and lastly, uh, players gain one victory point for each object in a wing. Uh, there are also separate advanced rules that allow victory points gained through completed objectives too. Um, but I'll talk about that at another time. Um, and that's about it. And the player with the most victory points wins. So what do I think of curators? Well, the rule book is really well laid out, easy to follow, uh, with lots of illustrations. I am unsure of the uh, quality of the tokens, boards and other components, so I can't really comment there. Now, as for the gameplay, I think it's quite a clever game. It's got some nice mechanics, uh, and that includes uh, how you take the wing tiles, for example. Do you shell out dollar for that tile you really, really want, or select the cheaper one, meaning it may take you longer to complete your contract, um, but you'll have this money to use elsewhere? Now, I also really like the double allocation action, and at times you may be able to use this to really boost an area in the game that you are lacking in. Um, or um, you may find yourself with a choice for a double action and have to wager this against another single action that you actually want to take. Um, now, as the game offers multiple choices, I think if played carefully, you can chain and link your turns quite successfully. Um, and if another player uh, blocked you, such as gaining that wing tile that you really wanted, um, you can then just go back and rethink your strategy. It does appear that there's going to be uh, very little downtime between turns, uh, which is very appealing, especially to new players and uh, those like my son who, who would really love to play this game. Plus the inclusion of this Tetris style contract puzzle system is a really nice idea to gain those precious victory points. Um, it is important to note that this review is of the Kickstarter campaign and the um, rules review only. Um, I've only played the simulation online, um, I haven't played the physical game, but I really want to. Um, overall, I, I like the theme, I think some of the mechanics are very appealing, um, and I do think you get a lot of choice for such a small game. Um, there may be some forward thinking for chaining your turns, 
and the contract element may mean it's tough for younger players to grasp this quickly, um, but I do think it's something my family would play and enjoy. Um, so this Curators, it's live on Kickstarter now. I suggest you go and have a look. It's, it looks like a really good, fun little game um, that's well worth a look. Um, anyway, this is Ninja Geek Games Reviews. Cheers.